Hi friends, this is Dr. Deepak Meghur and let me take you through a very interesting case. It's a case titled Save the Bag. This is about managing a case of a generalized weakness because of pseudo exfoliation in an elderly man with a dense cataract. In this case, I'll be demonstrating the IOL trap technique. This man has phacoadenosis because of zonular weakness and was referred to me by my friend who had actually he was going to do the surgery and had a change of uh, plan after doing the incision in this case and then he went refer it to me and you can see this is the incision site. The other other patient was operated elsewhere near back which turned out into an intercapsular extraction with an iris claw lens and the visual outcome was okay but not great. So I got multiple challenges to deal with this in this case. We got loose zonules, a moderately dilating pupil and a brown cataract. The most important anticipated intraoperative complication which I am concerned about would be the intraoperative worsening of the zonular weakness during surgery to inability to salvage the bag. My plan for this case is like this. Use pupil expansion device to dilate the pupil, CTI to stabilize the bag, emulsify the nucleus safely and put a multi-piece lens in the sulcus with optic capture. That's it. And these are the ingredients I'm going to use for a specific purpose. Dispersive OVD, cohesive OVD, BHEX ring, CTR, capsule hooks, multi-piece hydrophobic IOL. Capsule hooks is a standby. If need arise, I'll use it. During the surgery, I will highlight certain crucial moments and tips which have a bearing on how the surgery would proceed. After the main incision is created and the chamber is filled with dispersive OVD, why hooks are used to perform stretch pupilloplasty before using the BHEX ring. I'm using the BHEX ring now, uh, but if the zonular dehiscence is gross more than what I anticipate uh, and it becomes difficult to salvage the bag, and then I would remove this and uh, use capsule hooks instead, which would support both the capsular bag and as well as provide uh, mechanical pupillary dilatation. I always prefer using a forceps to do my rexus in eyes with these loose zonules. Sizing and centration of the rexus is extremely critical as I'm aiming to achieve an optic capture. Bigger rexus is good for managing the nucleus, uh, but the optic capture is going to be difficult. So I have a well centered and an adequately sized, about 5 mm sized rexus in this case. The most important step in the surgery is hydrodissection. We want the cortex in the nuclear complex to be devoid totally of any attachment with the nucleus. When I'm trying to decompress the lens and try to rotate the nucleus, I can see that the entire bag is moving. So it's time to go back and repeat the hydrodissection and again try to test it. But still, I'm convinced that the nuclear complex is still attached to the capsule bag. So the, now the next most important step. I want to put in the CTR now itself so that the bag receives an equatorial stretch and support. Few tricks while inserting the CTR. I first aspirate the cortex uh, in the area of introduction of the CTR under the anti-capsule. And then I'm going to create some space under the capsule by using cohesive OVD under it. Now the CTR is inserted quite easily. I always prefer the bimanual technique and the non-dominant hand supports the ring so that it can be introduced without putting any stress on the zonules. Once we have the CTR in the bag, it's like having won half the battle. I repeat hydrodissection and I'm rotating the nucleus using a sharp chopper and you can see that I'm vertically pushing the nucleus down and then rotating it and I can clearly see now that the cortex nuclear complex is free from its attachment to the bag because as, as I'm rotating the nucleus, the bag remains still. So now is the time to move on to managing the nucleus. 
So my plan is to uh, divide the nucleus into multiple fragments and then consume them. So my plan here is to use the stop and chop technique. During sculpting, I'm supporting the nucleus with my chopper. This helps as the bag is mobile. So supporting the nucleus is again an important tip which I'd like to share when dealing with such eyes with mobile bags. I consciously have chosen stop and chop technique here because I could have that extra space within the bag which would be helpful in minimizing transmitting any stress to the zonules during the nucleus manipulation rotation. It's important to create a deep trench as it helps in easier division of the nucleus into two halves without causing much stress on the zonules. Once the two heminuclei are created, I began vertical chopping of one of these heminuclei. As the nucleus is hard, after chopping it's important to perform lateral separation at progressively deeper plane so that uh, we can divide these fragments uh, successfully without inducing much stress on the surrounding structures like the bag, PC and the zonules. Among the three fragments which we have here, I am emulsifying two of them and I plan to retain one of these fragments in the bag so it acts like a tamponade and keeps the bag from becoming very floppy. During emulsifying these fragments, I can see that the bag behind is wobbly. So once two of these fragments are emulsified, it's time to go back and inject dispersive OVD first, followed by HPMC underneath it. The second heminucleus is now being divided into three smaller fragments. The same principles are being used here. Aim is to divide the nucleus but without causing much stress on the zonules. As I begin emulsifying these fragments, I can see clearly that the bag behind is wobbly and this is quite intimidating. I am continuing emulsification as slow and as steadily as possible. I am slowing down all my parameters so that there is absolutely no chance of a surge. Finally, the last piece is emulsified out. It was a sigh of a relief. The tougher part of the battle was won. But I need to remind myself that the cortex would be sticking onto the capsular bag still 
and extracting this cortex from underneath the CTR in a bag which is loose is still going to be challenging. Being patient and being careful and cautious, this approach is going to be very helpful in such, such situations. I'm retracting the iris so that I can see well what I'm aspirating and then slowly but surely I stip the cortex in a tangential manner right under the CTR. Similarly, cortex all round is gently aspirated out uh, using tangential uh, maneuvers. At this moment, I realized that the BHX ring has loosened off and is slipped from the pupillary margin. So I decided to remove it now and hoping that the pupil would remain the same size uh, until the completion of the surgery. So now is the time to implant the lens. Uh, my goal here is to place the lens in the sulcus and later perform optic capture. Sodium hyaluronate is used above the entry capsule to create some space. The distal haptic of the multi-piece lens is placed above the entry capsule and then the lens is dialed into the sulcus. Now is the time to remove the viscoelastic which is behind the lens. With bimanual I and A, I go behind the lens and remove all the OVD behind it and also all the OVD in front of it. So now is the time to perform the optic capture. My left hand has a irrigation handpiece and using the Sinsky hook in my right hand, the optic is gently tapped down so that it goes behind the capsule excess margin. Uh, this is confirmed by ovalization of the rexus. I retract the iris using the Y hook and the optic capture is confirmed at both ends. The IOL is nicely trapped uh, in between these rexus margins. 
the wounds are then hydrated and that's it, the case is done. This is the first post-op day and this is how the eye looks on the fifth post-op day. Well, to summarize, the IOL trap technique is a great way to manage uh, these lenses with generalized zonular weakness. I have been doing this technique for the last maybe 5-6 years uh, after having seen Dr. David Chang, Dr. Lisa Brizer and many others uh, use this technique in uh, such cases. And I must confess that it has served me really well. I have a follow-up of around 20 eyes over the last 5 years and so far they have been very stable. The IOL trap technique is my preferred technique of choice for eyes with generalized zonular weakness secondary to pseudo exfoliation. So that's it. Thank you for watching and hope this helps.